Hi, I'm Ted Baum, inventor and patent holder of the True Log Siding Panel. This instructional video will show you how simple it is to install True Log on your home. First step to uh, installing the True Log Siding is mounting the starter. The starter is the first piece that gets screwed to the house that accepts the first piece of the log siding. In order to do that, you need to find the lowest point of your foundation. You want to be half inch to one inch below the top of the foundation. Now to do that, what we do is measure from the soffit down to where you want your starter. So the first piece you'll take and make sure that you are one half to one inch below your foundation, put a mark. Once you have your mark, you want to take your tape and measure from the soffit to that mark. We have 84 and a half here. So then you want to go to the opposite end of the wall, come down 84 and a half there, and snap a line like I did here. That'll be the top of your starter. We've already installed two pieces of starter from the other end to here. To finish up, just take your last piece of starter here, full piece, butt it to your last one, mark. It doesn't have to be exactly tight to the wall, you want to leave room for the J channel. So take your snips, go ahead and cut the piece at that line and install it. I like using one inch to inch and a half screws as long as you get a good bite into your wall. Continue installing the starter uh, around your structure or your house. The next step is installing the corners. To do that, we need to measure from the soffit to the bottom of the starter. But your tape to the soffit, measure to the bottom of the starter, I have 86 and a half inches. I've already cut my corner that length, so now we'll install it. The next step is installing the J channel. The J channel is the product that goes around the windows and doors. That is used to accept the siding panel itself, conceals the cuts, and gives your structure that finished look. We're gonna measure from the bottom of the starter that we know is level, measure to the top of the door. I have 80 and a quarter. We wanna add a half inch for the J channel coming across to intersect in this corner. So we're gonna be at 80 and three quarters. I've already cut our piece of J channel the length that I need. At the top, I marked out for a half inch. So now we wanna remove that, that metal. Now at this point, I can install it. You want to be behind the starter, make sure that that cutout is flush at the top of the door. You can use nails, I like to uh, use screws. We're flush here, have my screw, it's everything's in place, I'll continue down. Now I'm going to continue the process to the other side. The 
next process is putting in our top J. The top J goes from outside to outside, so we want to measure from outside of door jam to outside of door jam, add two inches. That is for wrapping around, wrapping the J channel around the two side pieces. So now I'll measure from the end here, one inch on both ends, and snip it out. We want to leave a flap in there so the water has a way to continue down and not behind the door. So I'm cutting to my line, not past, and then I'm cutting a little chunk out, a little sliver, so we can wrap this flap down in. So you want to tuck, you want to go over the flap on both ends and inside the back. And this is to divert the water so it continues down and out. Okay, next you want to take that little flap, push that down in so it's tight to the side J. You can take your hammer and tap it to get it into place. Then take a pair of pliers and you want to wrap this face of this J around. It gives you a nice tight look, nice and clean, no ragged edges. Gives you a nice, nice clean look. For all your outside penetrations, your lights, your outlets, and your faucets, they make these trim pieces that you can get in any color. You can get these at your local siding supply house. You want to center it up the best you can. Doesn't matter where. Put a screw in it. Put a level on it. Then when you're finished with the job, go ahead and put your cover plate on. Just like we did on the door, we're wrapping J channel around the window. To do that, I measure the width. It's 52 and an eighth, so I want to cut my piece two inches longer, so we have 54 and an eighth. Now, on the bottom piece, you want to come in one inch on both ends and snip that out. Now to get a tighter fit around the window, I want to flare the J channel a little bit. So when we screw it to the wall, it fits tight to the window. So I want to hold this up, make sure my notch is flush with this side, and go ahead and put a screw in it. Make sure that we're good. Okay, now for our sides, you want to measure the height from top to bottom. We're at 36. We want to add one inch to our sides. So I'm at 37. 
Now on the sides, all we need to add is for the face, which is a half inch. So I added one inch total. Once again, we mark half inch down on both ends. And the side, we want to just snip out some corners. The top, we want to take it completely out. Okay, at this time, you want to take your J-channel, you want both the face and the back to be inside. So we slide that in, flush up the faces down here, and put a screw in. Bottom flap gets folded under. Once again, take your pliers, grab the face here, make sure you're snug, wrap that around, and then flatten it out. Gives you a real nice tight corner. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And now we'll do the top. Just like the bottom, we went two inches longer. The only difference here, just like we did on the top of the door, we're just going to snip the corners. Okay, I want to make sure it sits tight, so I'm going to flare it a little bit. It's ready to install. I want to be over the face in there, over the face here. Once I'm centered, I'll put a screw in the center of the headpiece. Pull my flap down. Take your pliers. Pull the face over the sides. done. While I'm installing my side, I want my laps to be at least four foot apart. So my second piece, I'll go ahead and mark four foot and cut it. You want to take the foam out to cut. Take it over to the saw, make sure you put your safety glasses and ear protection on. Get it on its line. And go ahead and cut. Okay, now we're gonna show you how to install the first piece into our starter and get it into the J channel. I went ahead and took the drop in backer out, so it makes it a little bit easier. You wanna slide the end in behind the J. You can feel it if it's in the starter. I want to hold it up, put a screw in, and then I want to check the other ends, make sure that they're in. And that one's in. And this one's in. So what I'm going to do is put a screw here. 
to hold it in place. Now you're ready to put your backer in. What's nice about this, it just drops right in and you can slide it down. Once the backer's in, go ahead and make sure that it's up yet and put a screw in. You can also use nails, whatever you're most comfortable with. For the next piece, you want to lap it a half inch over the other one. If you want to get in position. Lock it in place just like you did the other one. Put a screw to hold it. Make sure that this is locked properly. Put a screw here. Okay. Drop your foam backer in and slide it down. Screw it off and continue the process to finish out the wall. Okay, this next piece that I'll be installing has the outlet in the, in the way. So this is how you go about it. Go ahead and slide your piece into the J channel. Find your lock. Lock it in place. Then you can come over here and mark both sides, give it about an eighth of an inch. And you wanna see, I need to be five eighths of an inch from the top down from my cut. So I'll go ahead and mark that. It's right underneath my top lock and I'll cut that off. Then go ahead and put it back in position. locked in place, then you can drop your foam backer in and slide it down. And then put your nails or fasteners. Now if you look at this end here, I did my, my joints four foot apart. You can go three foot if you like, you can go two foot if you like. You just don't want them within a foot of each other. And mainly, it's for appearances. Okay, here on my next piece with my stagger, I'm gonna cut out for the light, or for the outlet show you how it's done. I go tight into the J channel, give it an eighth of an inch on both sides. Mark it. When you take your tape, you want to hook onto this top lock here to the top of the outlet. I have three and, I'm sorry, five and five eighths, so I want to be about five and seven eighths to give it enough to lock it in. So I'll hold my tape the bottom.
Okay, with your snips, go ahead and cut that out. Okay, trim my corners here so it's easier to get in. Now we have the sill trim that you purchase. That covers your cut, so that'll slide on. Okay. And you want to take your foam. You can mark it, take it out and cut it, or just try to cut it in place. Doesn't have to be exact. Get it over your top lock. Lock it into place. And put some screws in. Now we're ready to put in our trim piece to cover the cuts. Take your outer snap ring. Gives you that finished look. Next thing we'll show you here is how to cut out the siding to accept uh, the window. To do that, you want to be lapping over a half inch, three eighths to a half inch on your siding. So I'm going to hold my tape a half inch there and then measure to the inside of the J channel. And right there we have 15 and three quarters. And do the same on this side here, we have about 68. Once we have those measurements, we want to measure the depth. Here we're at five and seven eighths. And here we're approximately the same. So I'll take my siding here, hook onto the end, and measure the 15 three-quarter. And then we had 68 inches even. Then hold your tape flat. You want to be flush with the bottom edge. We'll mark the five and seven eighths on both ends. Take a square, put your lines there. And then to keep things straight, we'll use a level to make our mark. And now we'll cut.
Okay, when you cut, you smash it a little bit. You can just take your pliers and give it back its shape on both ends. And then at this point, you take your screwdriver and open up the locks when you cut it. Sometimes crushes it. Now when you're done there, you have a cut here that can be fairly sharp and you want to put a piece of sill trim on that to protect it and also to keep it stiff. So I already have mine cut. It's got a little groove in here for the siding to slide into. Just like that, and now she's ready to install. Now we cut our foam accordingly and slide it into place. Now for the foam underneath, I'll just hold it in position, take a pencil, mark about how much I'm going to need, and cut. Slide it from the end. Screw it off. Okay, now we have our siding uh, finished on both sides of the window and on this door. The next step is to do the piece of siding over the doors and windows. So basically it's the same process we did underneath. And I have my piece cut here, so we'll install it.
Okay, as you can tell, on the end here, it'd be pretty hard to get the foam in from up above. So what we do here is go ahead and the corner's flexible. You can pop the piece out, take your foam, you can slide it in from the end, get it in position, and then take a little flat bar and pop your last piece in. And then you can then screw it off. Okay, on this side here, we have room from the end to slide the piece in. And if it sticks out, it's not gonna hurt one little bit. We'll screw this off. And then we'll continue the process from here, cutting over the window. The next piece that we go over the window here, we might have a situation again where the foam is gonna be hard to get in from up above. So I pre-cut my foam, I slide it into place, bring it down to where it just covers the top lock, and I'll just put a nail in here to hold it in place until we have our siding in. and then screw it off here. Okay, now with our last piece, as you can tell, we're gonna have to have it ripped. So I'll just take your tape, measure from the soffit down, I have five inches. I wanna subtract a quarter inch to make it easier to get the, the siding in. So I'm gonna measure it, or my siding on both ends at four and three quarters, which I did. And then take, take a chalk line, blue chalk, and uh, snap a line so you can follow it when you cut. Okay, now that we have our siding ripped, I went ahead and stuck my styrofoam in here to get the width of it. As you can tell, I put it up here now, ripped, put one little nail in there to hold it because we can't get the styrofoam in after the fact. So now you just take your last strip, your last row here, get it in position. Lock it into place. Once it's locked into place, you can take a seven penny nail or whatever length you need to hit wood and put a nail every so often. And you want it up high enough to where your trim piece covers the nail. The last part here, we need to cover the gap that we have between the soffit and the last piece of sodding. And how we do that is use a little freeze board here and a notching tool. The freeze board, you want to come in here and notch, put a notch in. And what this does, it puts down a little piece of metal that will attach to the soffit J. Then on the end, we want to open up this hem a little bit. So we'll take your utility knife, open it up, so it'll accept the next piece. 
So what we want to do is get this between the soffit and the soffit J and snap it in place. And that notch will keep it in place so it can't come out, but you still, you'd still be able to get it out if you need to. And then we'll grab the next piece, 45 it, so it accepts into that and continue on. Okay, the last part of our true log project is snapping on the corner and the trim. To do that, cut your corner to the length that you need from the soffit to the bottom of your, your corner base. It has a ham, so you want to snap it on one side and then the other. You can put your hands behind here, your fingers, to make sure that it's attached. Once it's attached, then you can slide it up into place. Down at the bottom, put a tech screw in. Now your true log project is completed. Thank you very much.